Today we have a haiku, a hang glider, and a heist, which is in this book, but I'm going to come back to that in a minute too. Because I'm going to start with some wine. Thank you very much, Jonathan Davy, and Imogen Taylor. There they are. Aren't they lovely? They're friends. They're chums. They run Nectar Wines. Jen Jonathan's business, br utterly brilliant. Uh, Specialising in wines from, I'll make sure I get this right, Australia, California and South Africa. And it says here, why those three countries, you may ask, rather than Europe? Good question. Well, they're all rather wonderful to visit for a holiday. Don't, Jonathan. Seriously, don't. Don't taunt us. But above all, this is where we really believe some of the most exciting wine is being produced today. And he sent me along three really exciting wines. Well, actually, let's, let's be honest. It was Imogen who did it. So before we move on, this is Imogen and an article that she wrote. A very, I mean, a very bold article, very brave. Uh, poor old Imogen comes from an extraordinary lineage in the wine trade. She is the latest generation of great wine merchants and had a terrible liver infection. Nothing to do with drinking. Nothing at all, but a consequence of it was she's not been able to drink. And I think you still can't drink, can you? But I think works in wine, really talented, brilliant wine merchants, absolutely fabulous tasting talent I hear from people and can't uh, can't taste. So um, fingers crossed. I hope you get well soon, um, Imogen. I want to go and see you back, uh, back out. Well, you're out of the trade anyway. Right, what have you sent me first? Wonderwall Chardonnay. Field recordings, Wonderwall Chardonnay. Uh, I won't sing. I really won't sing. Um, I am tempted to start singing Oasis songs now, but I won't. Uh, this is from the Edna Valley. I'm, I'm going to have to do my bit here. So the, the guys here, the guy here, this is from um, Andrew Jones. That's it. And Andrew Jones knew lots and lots of, he made brilliant wines. But what he found were these little sites, little rough diamonds, I think he called them, that were hidden away, usually in very extreme places. And he's been making exciting wines out of them. Now, one of the things, I think we've already talked about this in California, all the valleys run like that, except that when you get north of sort of Santa Barbara, which is where this is, it goes like that. So you get much colder winds that are coming in and he's getting vineyard sites like in the Alexander in the Edna Valley, which are right in the ends of this the, these uh, cool valleys where it becomes quite extreme, although you are quite close to Los Angeles. So when you have a swell and snip there's a zing and a zest and a tingle about a wine like this. It is brightly fresh. It's somebody once described is my friend John Graves. Hello, John. Big John Graves, great great musician. Go and listen to Family Cat Records later because he's the bassist. Um, John Graves described Santorini Assyrtico as being like a Chablis on steroids. This is Poligny on steroids, if you like. Is it is a lovely, stylish Chardonnay, but wow. It wakes you up in the morning. Mm. And then getting this, the aftertaste, because it's got this real zesty freshness to it, you get this lovely kind of sweet finish that comes in afterwards, almost as your sort of palate is rebalancing. I know this is going to sound really weird, but your palate's going, ooh, a bit like, I don't know, you have a, a very cold, wild swim, and then you just feel this lovely warm glow afterwards. Does that make any sense at all? Or should I just sort of start filming this whole thing again? I love it. It's absolutely glorious. What does it say here? It describes it as hipster kryptonite. It's a great thing. Balanced ripe fruit. Yeah, but in a, there's lots of ripe fruit. There's a really sort of clean, zesty freshness. New oak and a funky uh, label featuring um, Duke Ellington. Golden fruited, luscious palate, fragrance. Zippy, refresher acidity to keep it all in check. That is so right. Mm. It's really good. Now, there is talk. We're going to talk about things that you have wine with. Lots of people talk about music. All these labels have uh, jazz musicians on them. For me, this Errol Garner's Concert by the Sea, although in fairness, that was up in Monterey, wasn't it, which is a bit further north. Classic album, though. It's really good. Because if you go north of Edna Valley, you get to places like Monterey uh, and Carmel, and that was where Clint Eastwood was mayor, I think, back in the day. And if you go south... Curious pop cultural wine connection. You get to Catalina, Catalina Island, 
which is where the Catalina wine mixer is in the film Step Brothers. There are a few people now going, I never thought he would talk about the film Step Brothers, uh, Will Ferrell uh, comedy. That's beautiful. I really like that. Now, let's find out how much it is. £24.70. You know what? An awful lot less than really good Polini. It's a stylish wine. It's really, really smart. It sat in 25% new oak barrels for eight months. I know we don't often do those sorts of bits and pieces. No fining or filtration. So you get lovely texture. People say these things. What does it mean? It means that you're left with this lovely texture if you don't fine it. And very little uh, SO2 added, only a bit at the time of bottling. I love that. Oh, that's really, really good. I'm going to jump straight into the next wine here. Choosing some good words here. Um, benevolent Neglect Cunois. You're thinking, not really heard of Cunois. Or maybe I've heard of it once when I was doing my WSET learning about Chateau Neuf de Pine. You're right. This is from the North Coast, California. Two sites. It's a beautiful label. It looks rather like the planetary surface of um, Jupiter. Now it says here, Cunois, a rarely seen grape from the Rhone that's usually blended in Chateau Neuf de Pape. Now I'm going to write this, I'm going to get this because I wrote a haiku about this on Twitter. Do you, do you want to hear it? See, I can hear you shouting no. Are you going to anyway? Because I'm in charge and I actually can't hear you screaming at me. It's um, Chateau Neuf du Pape blends 13 grapes, red and white, but can you name them? Not Chateau Neuf de Pape. <laughs> well, one of them you can. It's Cunois. Cunois is quite famous because it's got quite fresh acidity, low tannin. It's sort of a cross between, I know, like an earthy Pinot Noir, Gamay ish thing, but with Sanso, which we're seeing sort of more and more quite interesting Sanso. Mm. There's lovely red fruit, very fresh. Apparently, a lot of people are interested in Cunois because of climate change because it can keep that freshness without going jammy. It's a, it's a mid-weight wine. I would chill that just a little bit, just to take the edge off it. Um, now this is made by East Coast Boys, Matt Nagy and Ben Brenner. Matt used to make, uh, he made 1,100 point wines. So he sort of specialised in making these big, glossy, exuberant styles of California wine for a very big name Cali winery. But this is his bit on the side. We all need a bit on the side. As in a side gig, not as in that. Um, and they try and do as little intervention as possible. In that sense, it is the polar opposite. This is sort of yin to 100 point wine yang. I'm getting very spiritual today. They want to be the reliable translator. That is also £28.85. And it's different. Anybody who likes Rhone varieties is going to sort of love this. Adventurous winemaking. This is your sort of cup of tea. They're really, really lovely smart wines. It's juicy, very food friendly as well. Oh, I'll tell you what, I've still got some cold downstairs. I did a silver side of beef and had chimichurri. You'll be so glad you're not in the room with me right now because I'm glowing with the smell of garlic. Um, but it'd be really gorgeous with that. I may just keep myself a little glass. There's a pink peppercorns. This is their descriptions. They say um, star anise. It is that. Ripe red currant coolie. See, that's got a lightness about it. It's mid-framed. Should we move on to this next one? Brian McRobert Wines, who I'd never heard of before, which is probably a terrible thing on my part. Uh, this is his Abbotsdale Pinotage. There's Brian, just here. Mm. And this is from Swartland in South Africa, but specifically from Malmesbury. And I know almost nothing about Malmesbury in South Africa, other than that it is the main town in Swartland, which is this area on the Western Cape, which is warm and dry and very exciting. And some really interesting old fruit around there. We've had a couple of the wines from, uh, from Swartland. Um, and I know that this is named after the Earl of Malmesbury by his son-in-law. I think somebody once said. So his son-in-law was this British general who trundled around and he named this after his father-in-law. That's a way to keep in your father-in-law's good books, isn't it? Yeah. But I do know more about Malmesbury, England. Well, come on to that in a minute. Yeah. This is Duncan. Now, this is a pinotage. People are funny about pinotage. Don't be when you try something like this because it's absolutely glorious. This is more black fruit, um, 
and it's got lovely dry carrots to it. Mm. It is a meaty, rich, more tannic wine. I know this is probably not the right thing to say, but it's got this sort of slightly metallic, minerally tang. They say meat juices, but there's an element of, I mean, don't be put off, you can have it if you're a vegetarian, but it is slightly bloody in a really lovely way. Mouth coating texture, really lovely tannins to this. Oh, that's good. Remember, this is from a very warm part of South Africa, so there is plenty of ripeness. But it's it's no way jammy. It's a dry feel to it. Uh, very food friendly. This equally, if I'm feeling a bit more muscular, which I'm not at the moment because I'm not doing any exercise because I'm not bad for that. Um, if you're feeling muscular, this is a muscular wine for things like beef and aubergines and mushrooms. Oh God, get my that. That is really nice. What I do know about Malmesbury in England is that it is the where they buried is it Ethelred, who was the first king of all, all England. He's buried in Malmesbury Abbey, and it was there was a kind of cloister there. And somebody once said, well, it was, it was the thing about flying, and one of the earliest attempts at human flight was done by a monk in Malmesbury, and he just sort of launched himself off the church tower, and went about two hundred yards or something, and then broke both his legs. I don't think anybody tried again after that. Here's a little recommendation, and he died not so long ago. Roger Scruton. I know some, some people will be going, what? He's going to talk about Roger Scruton. Oh, I'm actually a fan of Roger Scruton. He wrote a brilliant book, and it was about, um, I think, therefore, I wine. I did I write it down? I can't remember if I did. Yeah, I drink, I drink, therefore, I am. It was a philosophy of wine drinking by Roger Scruton. And he particularly talked about how he felt the perfect accompaniment to wine was not music, but was philosophy, and you should take philosophy in sort of drafts, in mouthfuls, if you like. Hmm. Just quietly musing on Ars Rhetorica or something there. But he was a great wine fan, he wrote a wine column for the New Statesman, um, and a great friend of mine, a brilliant wine journalist, uh, she was studying with him. Um, Andrea Frost, if you see any of her stuff, she studied with Roger Scruton, um, doing her philosophy master's degree. And it's utterly fascinating talking to her about it. Oh, that's really lovely. Right, now there's an offer on all this. What was that last that last one is £17.20. That's a really good value, that. I know, you know, £17.20, and lots of people sort of say, how can that be good value? That is a belting wine. Now, what Nectar Wines, you need to go along to Nectar Wines, are doing is there is a discount, discount structure. So you get 5% for three bottles, 7.5% for six bottles, and 10% for 12 bottles. Okay, so they've got a sort of structured system. It's a scale, sliding scale, it slides. Um, but get on the mailing list because they put out really lovely offers, often of quite small, little, hard-to-find wines. So there'll be a little parcel of some of these wines that will come through that you can go and dig out. Um, now, what else do we have here? At, I've got, ah, a couple of questions. I've discovered, hello everybody, there's an online discussion group about this. I've had a look, I think I'm a member. Um, and I sort of pop, I don't like to go in too much in case you're all hating on me. Um, but it's, it's really lovely, I'm really sort of touched. And there's a question that's come through, does a higher alcohol mean that wine could have more flavour? And why do some people remove percentage of alcohol? There's a book in this, but you can do an experiment. If you ever get quite, you know, very high spirit alcohol or high percentage spirit alcohol and if you take um let's say lemon juice or sugar water and you add different amounts of alcohol to them you find as the alcohol goes up the alcohol is tasteless it doesn't taste of anything the smell of anything but it does make everything else taste more and smell more so what you'll find is that sweet things taste sweeter when they've got more alcohol in them and, uh, and acidic things taste more acidic. So it is true, it acts like a sort of monosodium glutamate for flavours. Um, the reason people take alcohol out is that actually now we're almost too good at making quite, al quite high alcohol wines. And that can make them very fumy and alcoholic and difficult to drink. So that's why I often winemakers, and the other reason is because of tax rates. So sometimes you can make wines that are so alcoholic, especially in the US, that they go up a tax band, so people strip some of it out. But managing flavour with alcohol. Now there is a movement, these are producers who don't fiddle around with the alcohol, 
And we'll tend to find this is more in some of the bigger production. In California, in the Napa Valley, though, some quite smart wineries. They won't talk about it, but they do go and take alcohol out. Um, there are other ways of managing alcohol when you harvest, how you look after your canopy, that kind of thing. It's a really fascinating sort of subject. Um, but we are generally in a general mood to reduce alcohol levels a little bit. Ah, now we've had a haiku. We've had hang gliding. That was the flying monk. Um, the heist. This is a brilliant book. It was made by, written by my friend Ben Hawkins. And it's Sherry. Maligned, Misunderstood, Magnificent. And it's a brilliant book on Sherry. It's really very good indeed. From the Academy Duvan Wine Library. There's a, a, if you want some good lockdown reading, there's a few. This, by Fiona Morrison, Great Wine Families, utterly fascinating tour into some of the great grand winemaking families of the world. It's an absolute gem. Really enjoyed that. I love meeting uh, Fiona. She was talking about it as well. She herself has married into one of the great winemaking families. Um, this, rest his soul, Michael Broadbent's uh, Wine Tasting. This was the first book that was published under the imprint. And it's a, re it's a classic. It's a lovely read to go back to. The first time anyone really codified wine tasting, certainly in English. Emile Penneau, I suppose, did it with Goudou Van in French. Um, this came out last year in Vino Veritas. This is a collection of brilliant people. In fact, Justin Howard Sneath, who we had earlier, Domain of the Bee, go back and visit him. I'm pretty certain. He, has he got something in here? I'm trying to look. I thought he'd. Yes, he does. Absolutely. There's lots of other people. Not me, I should point out. Not hers at all. Um, Dirk Nieport, George Orwell, Cyrus Redding, Philippe de Rothschild, Stephen Spurrier. Really good pieces there. This just came through the post just the other day. Loads of you will know this estate. Moussa, Chateau Moussa, and it's an absolutely captivating account of how you create one of the great wines of the world, what makes it so interesting in Lebanon, Bekar Valley, but also how Serge Hocker and how his family have made wine through the fog of war. And it's a really, really interesting account. I cannot recommend that enough. Anyway, Ben Hawkins' book, Sherry, this is lots of fun. In it, you know, you read wine books and you sort of, oh, it's all terribly serious. There's an amazing chapter about this appalling fraud that happened. And I had no idea he's uncovered this incredible story. I can't find it now. Um, about this absolutely dreadful fraud. And he's written, I think, I believe for the first time in detail about how it happened. And it was a, I say a heist, it was a, a wine fraud. It's not little known, it's not well known. Go and get yourself a can of Van Wine Library books. Various people have said, Canned wine, what are my views? I love it. You know, one of the biggest, or certainly most profitable wine sales last, was it last year or two years ago, was when the Fat Jewish sold his canned wine brand, primarily canned, uh, Babe Rosé, which I have to say I've never tried, so I'm not going to recommend it, only because I haven't tried Babe Rosé in a can. Tell us if you have. Um, now, Nectar Wines... Jonathan, Imogen, have this range of canned wines. So go and get yourself some canned wine from uh, from Next Wines. It's really, really good wines. The brilliant stuff. Interesting. The same philosophy from the rest of the business. Uh, a couple of other people are friends. Um, the Cronks. Hello. How are you? Uh, from Mirabeau. They're in Series 2. Remember, Matthew went along and visited, uh, visited the Cronks down in the south of France. They have Mirabeau Rosé in a can, quite widely available. It's a lovely thing to go and have picnics. Now we can go and have a bit of a wander around and a bit of a picnic. Go and take yourself some of that. Uh, the other is, do you remember James Hocking, the vegetable man with very smart California wines last week? Um, he has Larkan, which is brilliant it's absolutely delicious i really really love larkin so go and visit james hocking uh james hocking wines and get yourself some larkin wines right that's plenty enough 20 minutes that's all i'm allowed gotta go now i'll see you again on wednesday thanks for joining us Bye bye <laughs>